Hey friends, today we're talking all about healing and knowing your astrology elements and how that can help you in your healing and how it's helping me. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote for today, this beautiful Monday, healing takes courage and we all have courage, even if we have to dig a little bit to find it. That's from Tori Amos. Friends, I think you can figure out what we're talking about today. We're talking about the courage to heal and to heal ourselves. We're going to talk about a little bit about my healing journey, what's been working for me, what might work for you, and so on and so forth. A few other little things in there. Welcome back, Heal Squad. Thanks for being with us today. Like I said, we're talking health um, and something I've learned about how getting better in healing and getting better isn't easy, as <laughs> right. we always say, yeah. but we it's a whole lot easier if we do it together. Amen. I mean, I feel like the show has saved my life in so many ways already, and Mine I'm too. seeing in real time how much it's saving me. So I'm forever grateful <laughs> for Better Together, which is a weird place to be in because it's my show, but I, I know I'm on the journey with you guys. It's not just me you know, telling you guys what to do or bringing in these experts, I'm in there listening, taking notes. When you see me up here, I'm either taking time codes of like incredible aha moments, just in case we miss them and, uh, and or notes for myself. And I apply everything every single day as much as I can without putting a lot of pressure on myself, just whatever clicks, clicks, and then I do it. And so um, still high fiving myself, Ooh. not every single day. Okay. But most days, because I put little sticky notes on my makeup to remind me, and that oh, works. Oh, on your makeup. I yeah. like that. Yeah, because I know I like I'm going to grab the pot and see it, and I'm like, oh, Clever. high five yourself, tell yourself you're great, or whatever it is. And I'm sure the little sticky note makes you smile, too. Yeah. Cute. Well, like it that. really makes me smile when I high five myself, because <laughs> as we said, as Mel Robbins taught us on the show, it's meant to be a celebratory thing. So you you always have, what is it, endorphins that come yep. with that mm -hmm. celebration. And so do it for yourself. You don't need anybody to high five you. You can do it right in the mirror and put those fingerprints right up there and then just get some <laughs> Windex and clean it off and then do it all over again the next day. Boom. Boom. Um, so um, not only um, will I have stuff to share, but I know, Kelsey, you're going to share some stuff as well today. Before we get to that, friends, as you know, Macy's is a big supporter of the show. It's what keeps us going. So we're super grateful to them. I have my curated list of items from Macy's that I love uh, at macy's.com backslash better together clothes. So it's fashion, beauty, jewelry, homeware, gifts, all kinds of stuff. Soon we'll be updating it with lots of holiday gifts. Um, Kelsey, you got to remind me. You got it. Because got I'm going to have to go sift through. But I'll tell you, mm -hmm. I went to Macy's last night. And I can't wait to take you and Paria shopping. <laughs> I know, me um, too. Girls in the booth, you're all invited as well. <laughs> but I really love going and showing people that you don't have to spend a lot to look like a lot, to look great. And I was in there and I was finding so many pieces and I got this new Levi sweatsuit that's so hot. You're gonna die. Oh my it's the gosh. most comfortable sweats. I wanted to call Levi's after and say, can we make our merch with you? Because it's that good. It's Ooh, wow. that good. And by the way, I still might, but we don't have... So friends, we're doing this whole merch line. Elaine and I and Kelsey have been working really, really hard on it. And we're hustling to get it out soon. So it'll be great for the holidays for you guys. Um, but, you know, we have to order samples and make sure we love the, the items. And then Elaine's been doing the nitty gritty research to make sure that we know what type of material is best for the logo to go on so it's not peeling off. So just know it's our first attempt at this. We are learning and we're trying, but we're doing everything we can to make sure whatever we give you is quality because this stuff's expensive. They really, really charge a lot. They do. And so, um, you know, we're going to do the best that we can. And, uh, and so we're testing it out first. I'm going to put my stuff through the wash a million times and make sure. But um, but I really, really, really love the quality of their sweats. You're going to die. You're going to go so immediately excited. and get them. Well, my favorite. I'll I've put them on the um, the Macy's.com yes. backslash better together page instantly. You have to. I always tell you, I'm like, your 
like casual comfy wear is my favorite because you do such a great job in like making it street wear. Like Maria comes out in these sweatsuits that she can wear to a lunch or this or that, that like looks so good. And I'm like, <laughs> how are you doing this? Thanks, so queen. I'm very excited to see that. I'm also equally excited for our merch because yeah, there's a lot of time and effort going into that, but it's because you want it to be, Great. top tier yeah. and I like I respect it so I'm I'm not taking that off ever so yeah I think you you guys are gonna really love this one sweatshirt Kelsey and Elaine really created it's so cute um but Elaine will you remind me to put my new items I bought last night I would have forgotten if I didn't just see Macy's on our list today to talk about um then Kevin spotted oh it's another Levi's item he spotted this black denim jacket with fur inside and Ooh. fur on the collar but it's all black and I was like, Kevin, I don't need another jacket. I have so many. Oh, this is so cute. You're like, I need it. And it was on sale. And so Always. I got that. And then I got a bodysuit, a white bodysuit from And Now This. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm at the register paying with Linda, Linda was the nicest associate. She was so sweet. She asked me my name and she asked me, come back again, please. It was just like the old days where like people cared about consumers and and shout out Linda. Shout out to Linda. She was so sweet. And I saw this white long sleeve. I've needed a long sleeve white shirt. I have that free people cropped one that I love, but just like um almost like a thermal, but not a thermal. And I found one from Cotton On. So cute. It'll go under all like the vests and you know, another layer under sweaters and stuff. So I did a little shopping last night, so. You scored. That's that. I know, I was excited to see that text from you. Maria was like, I'm at Macy's and we have to go. There's so much cute stuff. And so I was much. like, sign me up, girl. And so much on sale. You just have to have taste and you have to just kind of be confident. So I have had the luxury of working with stylists my whole life, basically, my whole adult life. So your confidence comes from repetition in anything. So I'm constantly in fittings and I'm seeing stylists have courage to try things and do different things. And so now I'm at the place where I'm like, oh, I've logged the 10,000 hours in that department too. So I feel really confident that I can style people. When I used to take my mom shopping, we would go and I'd put all our outfits together. I'd take pictures of them and say, here are all the different ways you can wear it. And so I'll do the same thing with you guys. It was Paria's Christmas gift that I never ended up giving to her. Oh, geez, it's almost Christmas again. <laughs> Time flies, it guys. Does. So anyway, so we'll do it very soon. We'll capitalize on some of these sales and I'll get you guys all decked. You both need good professional yes. wear. Yes, I'm excited. And we'll get you the Levi sweats. Okay, great. <clears throat> so Macy's.com backslash better together, guys. It's a curated page of all my favorites and you support the show with any purchase through there. And if there's something at Macy's that you would like, but I don't have it on the page, just click through the page and buy anything there and we get the credit for it. So we're super appreciative of that. Um, speaking of clothes, I did mention something that you told me this morning was... Um, cool that you liked and you wanted me to mention. Yes. And so she was complimenting me on my yellow shirt today. And I said, well, I'm doing a new thing and it's called wipe out in the closet. Anything that I have not worn or I'm not going to wear, I'm getting rid of. So my test is in the morning, instead of reaching for the same things that I always reach for, I'll reach for something I haven't touched in a long time. And I'll put it on. I say, before I put it on, I'll say, if this doesn't look good, this gray shirt, like I put on a gray shirt this morning. I, I don't know why I don't want to part with it. It's this cute, splendid gray shirt, and I should like it. I put it on with the jeans. There's nothing it's ever going to look better with than jeans. So I said, I don't love it. And I took it off, and I got rid of it. And so that is how I'm cleaning out my closet, friends. Instead of having this big, big day, which I did have a mini day recently, I'm, I'm going about it like this now. Because I did a big day, and now I'm... You know, you're still afraid to part with a few things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of negotiating down some more. I love that because I feel like I always do that when I pack. <laughs> so my packing always takes 25 years because I'm literally cleaning my closet as I pack. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Kelsey, we don't need to be doing this every time we pack, which is not that often. Yeah. So I like... I don't know. It just hit me when you said that. I was like, yeah, because it's so often that we will just, you know, throw it on our chair, or just put it back in the closet. And then you don't see it for another mm -hmm. year. Or you'll wear it and say, okay, I after this, this wear, I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. And then you wash it and it goes right back where it's supposed to be. And you're like, oh shit, it's still there. It's still there. So just get rid of it. Yeah. So 
I'm going to start doing that. I had a mini day the other day, actually, too. Did I you? have a bag that I just need to bring to Goodwill, which I'm like, you know what? I also love to the crossroads or those places, the consignment shops. Mm-hmm. What I've started doing with them is instead of you can, you have the option to pick it back up or whatever they don't take, they donate. Yeah. So big fan of that because yeah. it's like, it often then sits in our car for forever. It's like, no, just get rid of it. Get rid mm-hmm. of it. I used to have a real attachment to things because I was afraid. I was like, oh gosh, what if I don't have money and I, I need it? And it's not a good mental head, head space to be in. And so um, as we talk about on the show, t- you know, every day we want to be manifesting more and not come from lack. And so I've had to abandon all of those kind of fears, which were, you know, not real, not based in anything real, just fears and um, little traumas from growing up the way we did and having lost everything and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I'm like, no, that's not my story. It's not my story. That was that story. This is my new story. And so, um, so if that helps you get rid of some stuff, (laughs) then, uh, I'm glad. Um, let's chat a little bit about healing friends. So, I have recently, um, Deborah Silverman, if you, by the way, if you haven't listened to our travel episode, let me just give a little shout out. People really loved our travel episode in terms of packing and all the pro tips. Go back and listen to that because you just inspired me when you were talking about how traveling still takes you so long. Um, take a listen to that, but let me give you one other suggestion. And that is the episode with Deborah Silverman. Did our new episode with her air yet? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So Deborah Silverman, we have two episodes with her. Listen to both. They're incredible. She uses, um, she was she a psychiatrist? What was her yes. actual? No, yes. not psychiatrist. Psychologist. 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 Um, the one that doesn't prescribe, yeah. Yeah, she was a psychologist and she studied astrology and she uses both to help heal people. So she came over to the house recently And she went through this process that she does that she's created with the four elements. And it's fire, air, water, and earth. And she has the placards down on the ground and you sit behind them. And it's funny how you start to embody whatever that is, just being behind it. And she really explained to me what all of those elements meant. And I've talked about this in a previous episode. But it hit me this morning just how life-changing and impactful that session was with her because she explained to me more about who I am. So I'm double water and air. So I'm two parts water, one part air. And my double water is very knowing, very psychic and all of that. And my lack of earth is where I battle. So my internal battle is always trying to be logical about everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm up here and I have a knowing (laughs) and I'm like, but I know I'm going to heal. And I know this is going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And then this side over here is like, well, that doesn't make sense. (laughs) You're obviously rationalizing, you're delusional, you're all these things. And so, you know, you get the, the two little birds perched on your shoulders. And so, you know, the whole goal was like, okay, let's get rid of the, the voice that's not serving us anymore and really lean into the fact that I have these abilities to see things and to know. And, um, she made me, she gave me a mantra, which is I'm a healer and I can heal anything that comes my way. And just understanding that nuance of the battle in my head between my knowing and the, the little voice that's trying to doubt because in my meditations with Dr. Joe, one of the things I ask for, because he'll say, what do you not want to do anymore? And I'm like, I don't want to doubt my healing anymore. I don't want to doubt my healing because the things I'm trying to heal, they say are unhealable. And so now imagine how your brain battles that, right? This is something you're going to have forever. It's an autoimmune condition and whatever. And oh, a brain tumor. How is that going to melt out of your head and (laughs) whatever? And so... Um, I've been focusing since the end of January on my full mind, body, and soul healing. And I am beginning to get evidence that things are shifting. And 
what I love about the meditations is it's an accountability partner for me. So every day I know without question, I'm going to meditate. And every day without question, I'm going to be focusing on that. There are a few meditations that stray from me kind of asking for what I want. So those are like little breaks, but basically every day, that's what I've been focusing on. And ever since Deb left, something has clicked and I've even noticed physical changes because now my knowing isn't blocked. My knowing is there. I fully, fully 1 billion percent with every cell in my body now believe that my healing is going to manifest in this 3D world, in blood work and in whatever comes forward at the doctors. I know I'm going to see all of it. And I keep getting the signs because he asks, ask for a sign. And so, oh gosh, what did I ask for a sign today? I got to remember. Um, my sign today, oh, my sign today was super weird. I got to write it down so I don't forget. <laughs> but you've had a couple recently that were like, uh, it, what? And they've come in, not even yeah. like one, but like folds of them. Have, have I told the stories? You told the coin and you, I don't think you told the feather one. So, so the day Deborah Silverman was coming over to the house, that was another meditation where I asked for a sign. And I asked that, and normally it's a bird or mm -hmm. a flower. Most recently I asked for a coin and I got to the gas station. They gave me a half dollar. I was like, what the <laughs> heck? Like how? This yeah. is insane. And so now I'm also not saying this is insane. I'm really trying to capture that and and make it more possible and more accessible in my mind that it's not crazy, right? And so um, I asked for a feather. And then instantly I thought of Deborah coming like soon after. And I go, wait, no, no, no. Deborah's woo woo, right? I don't want her to come give me a feather because that would be obvious. And that would not be, that would be something she's capable of doing. So I don't want it to come from her like that where she gives it to me. And so I finish my meditation, do my thing. Deborah shows up and we're about, we're setting the placards down and she says, I need a crystal. I need a pebble or a rock. I need a feather. And I started chuckling. <laughs> I go, a feather? <laughs> I go, where am I going to get a feather? Meanwhile, I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny, God. Like, okay, not officially my sign, but okay, we're, we're getting there. And then I remembered, hmm, I do have a pair of earrings that have feathers. So I grabbed the feather. Then I'm sitting across from her and probably halfway through the session, I notice she's wearing gold feather earrings. And I'm like, oh my Lord. Okay, now I'm really buying into this. This may be the sign. She's not giving me the feathers. They're just appearing. And then the next morning I wake up and I go to the kitchen and I see a gray feather on my kitchen counter. And I start screaming and Kevin's like, what's wrong? And I go, where did this feather come from? He's like, I don't know. I just found it on the floor in the kitchen and I put it on the counter. No, he would throw that away. Actually, I didn't even think about that right till right now. Yeah. He would throw that away. <laughs> yeah. Why would Kevin put a feather on the kitchen table? And so he wouldn't. He wouldn't. So wild. So, so cool. You ask for the signs, you get them. So today's sign is super strange. Let's see what happens. It's kind of gross too. I'll let you guys know what happens. But um, but I've asked that is this all going to manifest before the end of the year? Will I see what I'm seeing in my head and, and pulling towards me and my manifest, my, my uh, meditations? Will I see it by the end of the year? And I keep getting confirmation that I am and oh, amazing things are happening. That's what I have to say instead of crazy or whatever. Amazing things are happening. And I can't wait to fully report on it all to you guys. But, um, but she definitely solidified my belief in who I really am and that I am capable of healing and that I'm a healer and all of these things. And so if you are in the same boat, perhaps you want to try astrology and understand your elements. I knew astrology to a degree. There were a few things that I grabbed onto from people like they said freedom super important to you or, um, you know, a lot of them have told me I'm psychic or, um, a lot of them now are just saying this is your moment where you're really going to become super psychic. Like it's, it's, this is the period where it's opening up. And so, um, and I'm having those moments left and right, like left and right things are happening where I'll feel something and then follow the breadcrumb and be like, how did I know? Oh, okay. They told me I'm going to be super psychic. <laughs> 
Um, but getting that knowing is really helpful, especially with the elements, because even in hiring. So did we figure out Gabby's astrology? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. And so tell me about Gabby's astrology really quick. Yeah. Ga- hold on. Gabby's in it. studio, everyone. <laughs> Gabby, Gabby was one of our interns. I'm not out of my mind, right? Gabby's one You're of our correct. interns. She is here, um, for the day kind of shadowing Elaine and everybody. Um, oh, perfect. thanks girl. Um, and depending on her astrology you may get hired. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so Maria, so she's like, it's so funny because it's true. Maria and I are very similar and I'm double, I'm double, double water with fire. And we have a lot of the same things. I have no <gasps> earth. The fire is where you get your rebelliousness. Oh, definitely. No wonder. I know. And, <gasps> and listen to this, Maria. So this is what I'm in Deborah's astrology school, you guys, as we've talked about. Yeah, we should put a link to that for anybody who yes. wants to take this because I find this really, really helpful. It has, I want to take it so bad, but I know I'm going to borrow the benefits oh, from you. I'll just teach you. I, <laughs> but truly, and like I'm learning so much. So this last class, we talked about how much our rising signs are like, it's, it's your soul's purpose. You're rising. And I never saw it that way. It, it had always been taught to me like your rising sign is how you present to the world. But she was talking to us about how your rising is really like how if you lean into it, it's really like where your soul wants to be. So my rising is Leo. My rising is all fire. So like when I, I know Maria's face right now, I know, but I'm so water, like literally my, the rest of my chart is literally water. So anyways, yeah. So this that's why you and your dad butt heads yep. and that's yep. why you like, I have times my one liners. <laughs> yes. Yes. But then it's like, I, ch- I stop. Yeah. Anyway. So your moon sign is like how you are when you're most comfortable. Technically it's like the people who you feel most comfortable around or like yourself, like mine's a Scorpio moon. So like People are often shocked that I'm like a really deep, I'm not this like light. Like I had a friend who was like, let's go to the pumpkin patch. I'm like, Oh God, I don't want to do that. But like, she was so shocked because that's not my general like nature, how I present. So you being double, double, you know, double Double water, water. um, Mm -hmm. and fire. What do you know about yourself now? Oh my God. Well, I've been with the psychic thing as well. Like that's every, it was so crazy. We had, um, in our class, it's like, we learn a lesson and then she all, she goes through everyone's chart and she pulled up my chart and was like, Oh has anyone told you you're psychic? I'm like, that's so funny. Cause we literally were just talking about this with Maria. And I, and I know that too, where it's like, I've blocked a lot of stuff and it's like, but I know like I need to listen to my gut more. So that, that was something that I learned, especially like through this class, like I know, and I like going deep, but I always block myself going deep. Like I'm a very like deep emotional person. And she was, what I've learned is like, that's where my superpower is. Like, my knowing in that is like, no, lean the hell in. Um, And then I've also learned that I need to cultivate earth, which I know that because my head is up here typically, or like in, in the water, in the flow. Um, The other thing I learned, and this is, I mean, this is getting, it's so crazy how like complex the charts are. Mm. Like I now know enough where I can look at someone's chart, but I need like an hour. Like there's so many elements like your Mercury, where your Mercury is, is how your mind works. Where your Saturn is, is your life lesson. Like there's so many elements to it and it's so complex, but to be, yeah, generic, that's basically. So what's your life lesson? My life lesson is my is Pisces. It's in water. So it's leaning into my emotions. That's where my superpower is, is that makes feeling sense. those things and like listening to that. And then what's your soul's purpose? My soul's purpose is my Leo. So which it's is my, what? which is like leaning into the fire element. And, and like, what does that mean? So it's not being, so Leos are very, um, they want to perform. They are, they're so confident that they make other people confident. And like, I've always said about myself, I present very confident, but internally I'm not. And so it's like half of me is in it. So it's like fully leaning into that and not being scared. Mm. So yeah. It just takes time to just get takes into, time. grow into those shoes or takes something. takes time. But then your Mercury, which Maria and I were learning, I was looking at her Mercury, your Mercury's in Gemini, my, my Mercury's in Aquarius, which is like, that's how your mind works. So Aquarius is an air. So my mind is like, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, I'm always trying to pull you down. It, true, exactly. I'm like, are you hearing? Are you like, right. but you're, and I know, and I know, you I know, just don't know how to explain. Right, and you know happening. too, because your so yours is in Gemini, which is also air. So you know, because you're, I am. you're there, you That's are. why I say to you all the time, whenever I'm telling you something, I'm like, I mean, Kelsey, it's because I know, because I've been there. I know, it's you're like, I don't mean this in a mean way. I'm literally, it's me. Yeah. So, 
Anyways, those are some things I've learned. So Gabby's yes, Gabby's Gabby. chart. Dun, dun, dun. I know. So Gab, her son is Pisces, which is same as me. Her moon's in Aries, which is fun. That's very fiery. Pr- Priscilla, who's our Oh gosh, website. is she going to be talking back and being nasty to I us? Don't, I don't think so. <laughs> when I look at like... Gabby's like, what did I just walk Gabby's into? Gabby's like, what? Pris- Priscilla, who's like works on our website team, who's, amazing, who's my bestie, her moon's in Aries too. Aries people like... They can control their fire, maybe. They can control their fire a little bit more. They're like... Because I can tell Priscilla, she can control her fire. But she has it. Like She's professional and she can control it. Exactly. So Aries Aries can pop off. But when they learn to control it, it's like really powerful. And then her rising is Gemini. So air. North node in Leo. Mercury in Pisces. Saturn in Taurus. So So wait, do we have any earth here? Taurus. So she has her Taurus. So she needs to lean into that. Gab. Because so we need so what earth. is Gabby? <laughs> Air and water? Gabby is... No, she's water, air, and fire. Wow, we got combos. Yeah. Water, air, and fire. Oh, where is the earth? She has her, she has her Deborah Taurus. said we, know, we need <laughs> she has earth. Her, oh, it's so funny because she was like, what should I bring? And I was like, you need to bring, you need to show Maria how flipping organized you are. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I'm already like 10 steps ahead of you. I have you my little. You can't tell her that and cheat. <laughs> but no, but she was You're already. You're only cheating yourself. You're going to be like, I'm miserable. I have another me here. That's she gives an organize. <laughs> I can't keep it straight. But I will say she, she was like, oh, I already have. Like she had her. Her, her planner and then Elaine her little, will like, tell me organi- the truth. Elaine will. Elaine's going to be the G, the, the canary in the coal canary mine. She's coal not mine. organized. <laughs> you guys are going to kill yourselves. Gabby's like, what is <laughs> happening right now? <laughs> what is happening? But I will say, so her, this her, is funny. her Saturn's in Taurus, which is Earth. So when you lean into that, it's like her Earth is there. So she has the ability. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't have the ability and you don't have the ability no, technically. Don't. No, we really this don't. This is why I, I always say I'm an aspiring organized human. Me too, and an girl. aspiring Excel person. I just can't. I know, me too. That's <laughs> what Elaine has now. You guys are going to die. Elaine turned me on to, uh, you can buy, it's like 10 bucks on your iPad. You buy this like notes app and then you can make a graphic on Canva that you can take notes with on your iPad. It, it, it's changed. I'm literally obsessed because I'm like Maria where I have 72 n- different notes and lists and this yes, and that. Yes, a thousand lists. <laughs> it's so bad. I staple them together. No, it's so bad. But, but now this <laughs> staple is staple cha- them together. I do. But this has changed my life. So Kevin, thank you, Elaine. Guys, when we moved from our first house, and we had to, you know, pack up stuff. Kevin went in the office and he opened my drawers and he actually started tearing. He goes, you poor thing. I go, what? He goes, look at all these to-do lists. And I go, don't make fun of me. And he's like, no, I feel horrible for you. I can see how bad you're trying. And that just stays in my head forever. So, um, Gabby, we we love you, but um, but we you know we need some. We need our earth. Yeah. Um, and Elaine is somebody that is super earth, super organized. And Kelsey and I keep looking at each other when she comes up with some new Excel sheet or some new organization thing, and we like because Elaine's here just till the end of the year. Um, and we keep looking at each other and I'm like, get the handcuffs. Literally. Let's lock her in the basement. Lock her in. <laughs> lock her in. But I will say, even looking at Elaine, Elaine definitely has more earth than you and I both, but she doesn't have a ton of it. So there's... There's hope for there's Gabby. There's hope for Gabby. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah. We, we want hope. <laughs> we, we love the hope. We're all about hope here. <laughs> I'm dying. This is making me laugh so hard. Okay, so back to the healing, knowing these things will really kind of help you heal. And I wonder if your fire works against your healing sometimes. Oh, One billion zillion percent. And it's also funny because I've every like Ayurvedic person I've ever worked with tells me how much heat I have in my body. Yeah. And it's like suppressing the heat because sometimes with my fire, I don't let it out because I'm scared of it. And, and my water like counteracts it because I'm like, oh no, I shouldn't be doing that. So then I just, ent- I hold it all in and it's like, and then you burn. And then I burn. So we need to ask Deborah next time she's on the show, how we heal when we have these elements that are are battling, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was a light switch that turned on where I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not battling my earth anymore. I am aware of it. So when I'm aware of something, and I think this is what helps people or can help people is like they, they say if the first step in anything is admitting the issue, right? So I, I know now that I battle myself, I'm aware of it rather than just doing it. I'm aware I'm doing it, which is the the first part. And then second part is, okay, well, which one do I want to listen to? (laughs) Right. 
there's a knowing and then there's this doubt and doubt isn't going to get me anywhere. The knowing will. And if you listen to the Wayne Dyers, the Esther Hicks, even the Joe Dispenses, that knowing, that 1 billion percent knowing is what's going to manifest whatever you want, even the impossible, the seemingly impossible, because I don't think anything is impossible. Um, and so I feel like um, that's that really, really changed me. She said that process was going to be life-changing, and it really, really was. And so um, you might not be able to do a session with Deborah, but you can lean into learning your astrology and doing an astrology lesson with somebody. She does do things. She, yeah. And she has some, she has some teachers on her website. So we'll add the link there too. There's yeah. some girls on her, um, who work with her, who do readings. And one other thing I'll say too, that really helped me listening to you and Kev get your sessions. And what I would encourage you guys to do, she was talking about the highs and lows of each sign. So I have like a ton of Scorpio in my chart and she was, and so does Kevin. And so she was talking about how it's like the high of a Scorpio is like, you're super psychic. You're super like aware. The low of a so Scorpio is low. is low and you are constantly going to the negative. Dark. You th very dark. You think it's kind of like the world against you. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, because I'm like, so internally I go negative fast. And I was like, so like listening to her say that to Kevin, I was like, oh, so it's kind of what you were just saying, Maria. Once I have, now I have that awareness, I can catch it. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. Low end of Scorpio right here. So let's, let's swing it high. Let's, let's like lean into the beautiful end of it, you know? Yeah. So I would encourage that. If you can't afford your, or even like, if you can, but you don't have the time, like I would encourage you, look at your signs, look what elements they're in and look up, try and like, there's so much on Google, like Google the high and the low and try and lean in. Because like Maria yeah. said, it's like when you have that awareness, now I have that awareness. I'm like, oh, let's lean into the high of our Scorpio, not the low. Yeah. So. Well, listen, as we've heard on the show many times, you have to embrace all of you, right? Because there are reasons things are happening. There's signals. It's just not living in them not really staying in them. It's like, okay, get the message, get the signal, learn how to listen to yourself and try to move on, which is a lot to figure out. Um, you know, we had a dinner with two friends the other night and, and uh, of course we start talking about health and um, the, the gentleman we were sitting with was just talking about how he's cleaned out his diet. He's done all the right things and he's so frustrated that he doesn't feel better. And he's like, it's depressing. He's like, I'm trying so hard. And, um, and I think like we just, you know, it's, it is really hard. And so for anybody who is, he you know, on their healing journey right now and you're frustrated, I watch Kelsey, she tries so hard. Um, I try so hard and then I get knocked in the head sometimes too. And I'm like, really, <laughs> really more. But, um, but I feel like, um, you know, you have to have empathy for yourself and you have to know that this is not easy what you're trying to do. Um, you know, you're trying to reverse something that is, is full blown and attacking, whether it's a, an autoimmune condition, a gut thing or whatever. Um, I think your, your steps to healing are you really have to find someone to help you heal and, I know that my part of my mission is to make people more aware of um, kind of the system and what everybody's good at, right? Like medical doctors are great for what they do. Naturopaths are the ones who are really great at healing you and helping you heal. And, and you know, because the Western world is trained to diagnose and medicate. And so we need them to diagnose. We might need some medication to bridge the gap while we find that naturopath that's going to help us. But you really want to find somebody that is going to help you heal, that's going to look at the full picture. And, you know, I, you know, even in that scenario, um, he had had an endoscopy years ago. And um, I forget what they told him he had. And he adjusted some things. And then it just kept getting worse. And I was like, so you need to get another endoscopy. I'm like, if you're having stomach pain and it hurts, you need to get another endoscopy right away because you're a lot of people throw the kitchen sink at things and they hear, oh, try this or oh, try that. And then they add all these things in. And then, by the way, how I got liver damage once because I was going to the doctor when I first moved to LA 
And I was really sick and they kept giving me all these medications. I kept taking them and they never said, take this one off or take that one off. They just kept prescribing. So I kept taking everything thinking I was doing the right thing and I got liver damage. And so he had the same thing. They were giving him all these things. They never took everything, anything off. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so scary out there with the lack of knowledge we have about health on our own end, because we think we don't need to know. We think they know. And by the way, they have 12 minutes with us. Um, you know, my naturopath sits for two hours, two and a half hours, and she's not expensive like everybody else. And so this is somebody who's purposely working to heal people at an affordable way in an affordable way in this very remote area in Connecticut. Um, and I feel so grateful to know her because now she's like so busy and can't take on any new clients. I'm like, where do we find another Dr. Allison? (laughs) Because everybody else charges like $5,000 to get in the door. Um, that's not the case everywhere. I mean, in LA and kind of New York, but, um, but you know, it was shocking to me that he hadn't taken another test to see what he really has to deal with because you can't throw the kitchen sink at things and just think you're going to heal. You have to know specifically what's wrong and then get to the root cause and heal that. And that takes, you know, a focus and just taking a million things like you at some point, you oh were taking gosh. a million things. I'm like, a Kelsey, million things. whoa, whoa, whoa. And, t- and listening to a million different people. I'm like, we got to get one person and just trust that one person. And when we did that, you got a benefit. Yep. You can share if you want. I don't want to share it. Dr. Lippman was amazing. And he he really helped me because we did a swap with him for the show. And he was awesome. And like, I actually, I was like, okay, we're cutting out the others. Because Maria was like, this is insanity. And I sat and I listened to him. And that was kind of like this, the beginning of like me actually like starting to heal from the SIBO and that sort of stuff. So you need a quarterback. Um, and then, you know, the reason I love this show is because we're constantly learning and getting better. You can throw the kitchen sink at one thing and that's your diet, right? So we can, and your and that, I mean, your mental, physical, spiritual diet, we can be making baby steps, right? You can set a goal. Like eventually I want to cut out sugar or eventually I want to cut out dairy or eventually, and like slowly be working towards it right? You could be making baby steps towards things. It's like, that's why dieting is so hard for people because it's, you know, we try to go cold Turkey with everything and it's a lot. And our world isn't really, um, set up for us to be healthy, unfortunately. Right. If you go out to eat, which many of us do now, it's a, it's a normal thing to go out to eat. Um, you know, growing up, we didn't have money to go out to eat. That was a rare, rare thing. So we ate at home. We ate really clean and healthy. But um, when you go out to eat, they're putting so much sugar in the salad dressing. They're putting sugar in everything. They're putting dairy in everything. They're everything's gluten. Everything's pretty bad for you. Um, and so you can be making baby steps towards um the stuff that you can do that isn't going to work against you, for example. It's never going to work against you to eat clean, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, um, clean proteins. That's never going to work against you. So like when I say what's going to work against you is when you're just taking a million supplements and you're aimlessly doing everything that everybody tells you to do. So, um, you know, it's uh, taking those cold showers once in a while or doing you know, so that's your version of a cold plunge. If you don't have a cold plunge, we don't have a cold plunge. So I just, I jump in my cold pool. Um, and you know, you don't have a cold pool. You can take a cold shower. Um, but I will say Maria, like when you and I, I kind of had like an aha when you were talking about this, when we were traveling, because none of this stuff is easy and or fun, Mm -hmm. fun in the like world that we live in right now. So it's like, yeah, okay. I can try and eat as clean as I can. But if my friends are like, let's go get tacos and chips and Marg's, you know, it's like, that's not fun for me to like try and eat better. But you made the point of like healing isn't necessarily like fun and it, and, and anything that's like worth working for isn't going to be easy, Yeah, you know? And so that for me really, like kind of flipped a, like a, just a light bulb in my head. And, you know, now celebrating like the small victories, right. Where it's like, I still go out with my friends, but if I order, I don't know, 
something that's like a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. Or get olive oil instead of the dressing that comes with the salad. It's like those small victories, like do what you can, but be aware also that like anything that's like worth it isn't going to be easy. I don't, that really helped me. So I I want to share that. You can go through a period of it. Like it doesn't have to be forever, probably, hopefully, right? If you give your body the things it needs, it should heal hypothetically, right? Um, and Kelsey, you're really good at it. You were yeah. so much better at it than me. It's hard. You were like <laughs> queen of like, you know, just eating air, I'll yeah. call it, because yeah. it was nothing fun, but you made it fun. Like, yeah, I was so impressed with you and oh, your you. your ability to do it. So you have it in you. Um, and I think we all have it in us. I think you have to change who you're spending your time with. That's what I wrote about in the Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. When I was focusing on getting healthier and losing weight, I stopped going out to those dinners and I started cooking for myself and I did everything I could to set myself up for success, right? You leave the dog in the house and give him complete room of the house, you're taking chances, right? He might tear up the couch. He might poop in the in the living room. You might you give them boundaries. So you got to give yourself boundaries too to protect yourself through that tough period where you have to make those tough choices. So I would say like at night when I would maybe eat at night, I would go to bed early and I'd drink a big thing of hot water. So I would feel satiated and I'd go to sleep. And that's what I did in the journey to lose the last 20 pounds. Um, The first 20 pounds was taking little teeny baby steps that accumulated, right? There's an accumulation effect that gets you to your illness, but there should be an accumulation effect to get you to your healing. And I think that it seems so overwhelming. And when you hear doctors say, you're going to have this forever, you can believe that or you can believe in possibility. And living in possibility is so much better. I'll tell you, I've had a very interesting journey this year and living in possibility has made it so much more peaceful and I'm achieving results. And so even with my mom, my mom had stage four brain cancer. I chose to believe in possibility rather than the death sentence that they gave us, right? Or that they say it comes with glioblastoma. Well, then what happened? My mom got almost five years and we had really great years. Yes, we had challenges throughout, but Living in that hope and in that possibility is so much better for you, even if you think it's delusional at times, right? Even if you don't have Deborah Silverman to clean out your mind and say, you're not delusional, you're not rationalizing, you have a knowing, you believe. Um, I'm telling you right now, if you if you believe you can heal, shut off that other voice, shut it down and just stick with this belief and this knowing because that's going to carry you through the tough times, but it's also more than likely going to carry you to your healing. And, um, and I'm, I'm watching it in real time. I'm guinea pigging myself friends and between the meditations and, um, and everything I'm doing, I'm seeing results. It's not been easy. Um, and I've had to, it's been a lonely journey, but in a good way. Um, I really have just stayed inward and I've stayed meditating. I've stayed doing the things I have to do, but really just, you know, not seeing a lot of people, not doing a lot of things that are going to encourage different behaviors like bread and the things that are not good for me right now. And it also gives me more time to focus on my healing and see my healing and think of new ways and research new things that I can try to do. Um, And again, that's why I love the show because it has exposed me to so much possibility Um, that I'm like, okay, I just have to keep researching till I find that one person who has reversed this or has healed themselves from this or has made changes, um, in their health and then come up with my own knowing and my own thoughts and my own beliefs. Um, so I will, uh, leave that there because we've been chatting for quite some time now and, uh, and we can do more of these too. Um, and if you want to ask questions, um, and if you if you want more help on on healing and direction on it all, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We love answering your questions. Um, in the meantime, we are going to uh, wrap this up. Gabby, can we give Gabby the mic for a second? Gab, 
Gabby, are you frightened? Can you speak into my mic? Not frightened. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> this was not meant to frighten you. We are not challenging you, just so you know. And we're not trying to, you know, <laughs> make you worry. Um, it was just a fun chat. Anyway, um, thanks, friends, for being with us. Thanks for being a part of the show. Get ready for the merch. It's coming soon. And uh, in the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.